So, you know, first and foremost, I do want to thank the InterSource Commons community for having me speak at this fall summit 2023. This was fun fact, my very first community that I was ever involved in, and I have not ever felt more welcomed and just learned so much about so many different things that really this community has given me the confidence to really be the technologist that I am today. So I just want to give that kudos to the InterSource Commons community. But um, as Neil mentioned, we are going to be talking about InterSource Commons and Finos. And what we're going to be doing really is how to leverage these special interest groups for your enterprise. Because on my side of house, when we're working in highly uh, regulated enterprises, software consumption, contribution processes, um, the entire development lifecycle could be a bit of a challenge. And then many times when you reach within this technical culture space, there are these perceived roadblocks that get in the way of development, which does have unintended consequences. One of these could be technologists don't know how to access their dependencies, resolve vulnerabilities, upgrade their any of their particular software and their package version. And, and it can really spring into a line of just tickets and the slowdown of innovation. And one of the best ways to overcome this within your enterprise is through the work within special interest groups. So today I do wanna share more about InterSource Commons and Finos and how we're working together to ease the burden of traditional development for further innovation and satisfaction. So a little bit about me, I am a Temple University graduate. I graduated back in, started college a little late, but I graduated back in 2011 with an education degree. And throughout that time, I transitioned into technology. So um, I currently am the open source program office strategist at Fannie Mae. I work heavily within the three pillars of the open source software design lifecycle, which is really inner source based, community based, and really wanting to harness this development and contribution of innovation. I currently sit as a co-chair for the Finos InterSource Special Interest Group. And then I'm an avid Cleveland Browns fan. Uh, yep, not the, not the best team, but you know, I still love them. And this was me last year in uh, Cleveland on a Thursday night football game, just getting dumped on with rain. So, but I was still there and I stayed the whole time. So the goals for today. We're going to explore the impact on enterprises with and without SIGs. We're going to discuss Finos and the work that is happening there within InterSource. And then finally, I'm going to share how InterSource Commons and Finos are working together. So very high level, what is a SIG? You know, special interest group, or, you know, sometimes in many industries, we call them communities of practice. Hundreds of them exist in the open source space but there are so many growing within inner source. And this is surely like, it's an amazing, amazing impact. And, you know, they're formed by individuals, organizations, and these enterprises with a shared interest in many of the development facets for responsible development. And that's very important. You know, what are some of the positive impacts of having a special interest group? You have strong processes. Your processes lead to innovation, which has this maturity level, which then leads to your people. Your people are very happy because they're getting the work done that they want to do in a way that is beneficial for not only the company, but for themselves. You know, we want to consistently be motivated. We, we all have to work, you know, so why not be happy as we're doing it? And I have noticed directly positive impacts from these special interest groups that I am in. And I'm taking these concepts inside of my company to really change the way that we do think. <clears throat> but what does it look like if there is a special interest group not leveraged within your company? And I think when I flip over to this slide, many of us will kind of feel that <gasps> I know what this is like. So impacts to a company really support tickets for unavoidable, for completely avoidable questions. Like for example, I, I'm this SLA time is running high. I can't get in contact with someone on the project. Um, I, all of a sudden, you know, I can't have access to this particular software. What do I do? Or 
I just haven't heard from someone in a while. And, and these things can definitely be avoided. You have support teams that get bogged down with low level, level impacts where they could be focusing on solving the bigger picture, but instead they're just helping people access you know, their calendars or things like that, or, you know, being able to turn into meetings. And what does this do? It really slows down innovation. You, you If you can't hear back from someone within, you know, a, a day's time, you're blocked. And then therefore you're unable to do the work that you need to do. And it, it kind of demotivates you because then you're, you're getting antsy. You're feeling as though, well, I can't develop in the way that I want to. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I doing something wrong? And and then you get that brain drain. And many of us remember, you know, between 2021 and 2022, 71.6 million people left their jobs, and they and it averaged about 3.98 million people quitting each month. And this happened within the tech industry because. We had a higher development demand, a lack of innovation. We just, we had to keep the lights on and then it was really hard and leveraging a special interest group or having that support within a company that really helps you avoid these things again. You know, uh, special interest groups, they serve as catalysts for awareness, education and advocacy so surrounding important practices. And this is this can be even taken outside of technology. You know, if it's something that's important, you want to be involved, that's huge. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Finos, right? So this is uh, the FinTech Open Source Foundation, which is underneath of the Linux Foundation. This is a fantastic group. Um, I'm really happy and to be a part of this group as well as InterSource Commons. So it, right here, it, there are a community of practitioners within the LF that are finding solutions within the open source space for financial services. Financial services, we are a highly regulated risk adverse industry, and we need to be very careful with the things that we're doing because we want to make sure that everything is secure and safe. And so the main goal of this group is to provide that independent open setting to deliver software and standards that do address the common challenges that do then in turn drive innovation. And InterSource plays very heavily into this. So how is Venus and InterSource Commons working together? You know, I've gone through some of the challenges and, and what is Venus, and I want to share what we can do. You know, traditionally in the financial services or in fintech, we cannot really give back into the open. So, you know, internally we can. So what are we going to do at Finos that make these concepts obtainable with that fintech edge, right? We, we want to continue to have that collaboration of innovation and open conversation. And we want to continue to be able to work together, but internally. <clears throat> And so we have an inner sort of special interest group. This, this group is uh, absolutely fantastic. So if you are in financial services and you want to learn more, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But these are some of the things that we're doing. We are providing guidance for these industries on getting started, developing personas around each kind of team type and maturity models. We are currently writing numerous different types of blogs, giving project guidance, and we are hosting community calls as well as presentations. Well, wait, maybe some of you are thinking, as we are at InterSource Commons, many of these resources exist, right? Well, we 1000% agree. And that's why we are working together to share these resources. Just like within any InterSource methodology, we do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to collaborate. So what are we doing together? You know, these are not two different groups, two different sides of house, two different foundations, yes. But we are a collaborative team that are tackling many different facets of the work that is developed for that shared goal of innovation. Working in a silo, as we know, is not beneficial. You know, going back to my slide earlier, you get antsy, you, you don't know how to collaborate with people. It's just, it gives you that, that edge where you're just not that comfortable. So we were working together, 
we're working through content about inner source that is tailored towards the financial services. We have identified our champions within Finos that really care about inner source. And one of those uh, people are gonna be speaking tomorrow, Treminja De Silva. Um, it's, we're really excited to see that talk as well. You know, defining our goals and objectives is what we're doing right now, you know, through being a part of inner source commons, we are just doing all of these particular things. And then, you know, we're communicating and we're promoting. We we have regular meetings every two weeks, which are very, very nice. We have a really strong work plan that I'm going to talk about. As mentioned, we want to collaborate. We want to bring more folks together from financial institutions to really kind of not only express their challenges, because that's one thing we all are very good at doing is expressing potentially our frustrations, but we like to determine solutions. We want to find ways that we can get through those barriers. And then that's where we are working together with Inner Source Commons to collaborate. We have different themes that we are determining. We're going to be talking many times in the future about security. We're going to be talking about metrics, which is huge, right? And we're going to doing that cross parallel kind of communication there. And then we're going to be measuring progress. One of the wonderful things about um, Intersource Commons and Finos is that this is not something that is a competition. We have a signed agreement to work together and, and it's awesome, right? And, and, and exactly just that, working with Claire in the past and now Russ is here and and just seeing that folks are so open to doing this is just very exciting. So yeah, we want to talk about defining the inner source purpose within financial industries. We want to talk about, you know, how that value exists and how we can tailor that into financial industries, project discovery, and all of these things. So that's pretty cool. So we have some roles, right? Roles in our in our special interest groups. You know, ideally, as you look forth through, <clears throat> as you're working through within many different SIGs, you can see that most of these just fall into a pattern, but we do have a facilitator. We kind of loop these, these all together. Right now, we're all just kind of pulling all of these different roles, but what we'd like to do in the future is maybe have some folks from Inner Source Commons want to come in and see, well, okay, I'm, I am a technical expert when it comes to inner source. Where where does this fall in? You know, I, I'm strong within metrics and doing all of these things within my past enterprise. How can I help? Right. Um, that 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 would be absolutely fantastic. Governance is huge. Um, right now, I'm the liaison within the inner source commons community because y'all are fantastic. And we just have all of these things. So if anything interests you and you want to learn more, or you think that you could provide us um, some clarity on what we're doing, we are completely open, right? We have an internal portal. We have a GitHub collaborative space where you could see the work that we are doing. You could submit your pull requests into that. You could leave comments. You could say, well, wait, why are you doing this when we have this there? We have a shared Google Drive. We have a Slack instance. As mentioned, we do have these biweekly meetings. And within these biweekly meetings, because we're really just getting our footing here, we hold open discussions. We pick a topic, like for example, what makes a strong candidate for inner source? And we'd like to hear from the community on what they think makes a strong, you know, inner source candidate and what people are doing. Of course, everything's under Chatham House rules and all of these things, but you can see exactly what we're doing. We are not trying to hide the work that we are putting in. We want to collaborate. And, and so far it's been a, it's been a wonderful partnership. So as we're wrapping up here, so why does this matter, right? You know, partnerships, as mentioned earlier, across SIGs require that commitment, time, and dedication within that collaborative spirit. And through Finos and the Inner Source Commons, we are developing these steps and these resources together, and we can lay the foundation for a successful initiative within FinTech. So I think that's all the time that I have, and I will open it up if possible for question and answer. And this is my dog, his name is Bernie Kozar Jr. Going back with the Cleveland Browns theme, but you can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me on GitHub. And yeah, so thank you all so much.